we are going to get started then. So, uh, welcome everyone to Cert Manager Past, Present and Future. Uh, we're going to keep the audience interaction to a minimum. It's uh, Friday morning and there was obviously the parties last night. I hope everyone's feeling okay. Uh, anyone else at Spookinetti's last night? Any hands? No? Uh, there's, there's, there's some nods. There we go, yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you all for coming. Um, we'll start off by introducing ourselves. You might have expected that. I'm Ash, or Ashley, I don't mind either way. I'm a senior software engineer at Jetstack and also a cert manager maintainer, which is useful for this talk, right? Um, I'm super interested in like cryptography and uh, certificates, TLS, all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of angle I approach it all from. Obviously, some interest in Kubernetes as well, given the, uh, the nature of cert manager. Yeah. And I'm Jake. I'm a platform engineer at G Research. We're kind of a London-based financial research company. Um, also a set manager maintainer. Um, I'm kind of interested in like highly scalable secure systems where everything has an identity. Yes. Aren't we all? <laughs> so yeah, we thought we'd talk, talk a little bit about Cert Manager, where it came from. So in May 2016, there was a project called Cube Lego, which is open sourced by Jetstack, my, my old employer. Um, the idea was that you'd have your, your ingress into your cluster, and you'd want a publicly trusted certificate for it. So you'd stick an annotation on your ingress. Cube Lego would contact Let's Encrypt, and only Let's Encrypt. It would solve the http one challenge, and it would give you a publicly trusted certificate. And this was a really popular kind of thing to deploy on Kubernetes, because the workflow was so easy. Um, we liked this. We thought it was a good idea. Um, tried to make it a little bit more cloud native. So started to create some custom resource definitions that would hold the state of your certificates, your certificate requests, and your challenges. So you could store all your state in the Kubernetes API. So people started using this over the next uh, two years. So we thought, well, we better make our CRD API stable because we have a lot of production users now. We're not going to break it. So anyone here a production user or a set manager? Yes, that's what we like to see. It's got, it's got 15, 15 million pulls a day when I last looked. So there's a lot of production users. So yeah, can't break them. And even if you don't know if you're using it, you might be, because it's included by default in a few cloud distributions. It's like the VMware people reached out to us a while back, showing how it was embedded in Tanzu. I've actually spoken to a few people this week who told me for the first time that they were using it as part of the distribution. I was like, oh, neat, cool. So yeah, we ended up with our V1 CRD API in September 2020. And we promise we'll never break this API. We've done them well so far. <laughs> we'll do our best. So fast forward to February this year. Um, we kicked off the incubation process. Um, and we got officially announced just last week that we are, we've joined the CNCF incubator. Ooh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Got to give some shout out. So thanks a lot to uh, Ricardo Rocha from the uh, Technical Oversight Committee for sponsoring us. And oh, thanks to Ash and, and uh, my old colleague Joachim for like, kicking off the process and like, everyone for seeing it through. There was a whole bunch of work there. And thank you for the shout out, Jake. But uh, <laughs> there's so many other people we could thank as well. Um, it was a really great process. And I think there is a possibility that in the crowd today, there are people from the TOC who sort of gave us a thumbs up for incubation. Thank you specifically, obviously, um, or if anyone watches this back. Uh, and also just thank you to everyone that's here because this is so cliche, right? This is, so, this is what you, everyone says, but like the community is everything. And, and we, we genuinely love talking to people about this stuff. And it's people contributing and raising issues, pull requests, just getting involved that really drives everything forwards. That's why we are where we are. And yeah, just a huge thank you for all of that. It's, a, it's, it's a, a great train to be on, and we hope it continues. Cool. So that was the history lesson. And we'll just talk briefly about what Sound Manager is, although maybe people know already. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're basically a cloud native operator for certificates. We've got our CRDs and Sound Manager, which operates over them. Probably one of the first things that you'd install on a production cluster if you're a cluster administrator. 
Um, we basically just want to make managing TLS in your cluster simple and easy. Like our workflow is really simple. The final certificates are available in Kubernetes secrets. And originally, they were just in PEM, but apparently, real users need like PKCS12 and Java key stores. So we, we make all of the formats available, and you can just mount them in your pod and consume them. And you don't need to learn ASN1 or to manually make your certificate request and email it to your certificate authority like before. And yeah, certificates are just renewed in good time, which means that fairly often, even now, you see big companies go down, and it turns out, oh, one of their key certificates buried somewhere in their infrastructure has expired, and it's really embarrassing for everyone. If you're using Stack Manager, that should never happen. We promise. <laughs> Asterisk, we promise asterisk. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's all of the components are modular, so we have a lot of integrations, but I think we'll talk a little bit about those in the forthcoming slides. Yeah, we, we have this, we threw the number of our GitHub stars on here. Uh, every time we write slides, this seems to have to be updated. Um, we'd love to get to 10,000, so maybe this is a mini call to action. Like, if you could star the repo after this, like, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I'm going to do a really quick overview of sort of the general gist of how Cert Manager works. We're not going to dive into code or anything because who wants to do that, right? Uh, gen generally, uh, we have a few CRDs which model the core sort of ideas of issuing a certificate. So at the top there, we have issuers, and that's how you describe how to get a certificate from what service or from where or whatever. Uh, and things like authentication for that service or, or whatever it may be. Uh, we've got some examples of different issuers there. Uh, Let's Encrypt is a big one, the big one. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, HashiCorp Vault is also very popular. A lot of people managing all of their most secure secrets in there. Uh, Venify TPP is another option that you see a lot of, uh, especially enterprises, using. Uh, but there's, there's more. That, as Jake alluded to, there's, there's external issuers as well. There's all kinds of things. I actually had a... a a guy came up to me yesterday and asked about an issuer that I'd never personally heard of, but we were able to find a cert manager issuer that someone had written for it. So it's always cool to see that. In the middle, there's cert manager, right? Cert manager will talk to whatever issue you ask um, and try and get the certificate that you request, and you specify that certificate in a different CRD. Um, it's really pretty simple from this high-level overview. The end goal, ideally, if everything went well, which usually it seems to go well, uh, is that you end up with your certificate inside a Kubernetes secret, and you can use it however you want to use it. That might be identifying a service, uh, like a website or something, web UKI. That might be identifying a client for MTLS or something like that. But, but once the certificate's there, you can use it, and you can hopefully rely on it being renewed. And if you don't care about this overview, we kept the very simple, just annotate your ingress, and you get a certificate workflow, which we think that 90% of people are using. Yeah, yeah. it's very popular. <laughs> So I mentioned like the, the Acme stuff, the Let's Encrypt stuff, is by far the most popular as far as we can tell. Like we're not collecting telemetry or anything really, so we don't really know unless people tell us. But certainly Acme seems like the main one because the certificates are publicly trusted. And that tends to take the form of Let's Encrypt, right? That's the most popular, super awesome. Uh, they sort of got the ball rolling and making like TLS certificates more obtainable for everyone. Uh, but we, like I said, we have all these other issuers as you might need them. It's automated, we really want to drive that point home, and it's extensible, which we also want to drive home. Right? We don't want to leave anyone out in the dark. That's kind of the power of an open source project is that we can just define those APIs and people can go and run with them. There's at least one person I spoke to this week who's running their entirely private uh, PKI, and they've written an issuer, an external issuer just for their private internal organization PKI, and that's totally valid too, right? Um, Another huge part of the current status of the project is obviously security. Given the state of Kubernetes generally and the aims of the project, security is pretty important. Uh, we, we really need to focus on making sure that the private keys are actually kept private and all that stuff. Um, so we, we do view Cert Manager as being critical security infrastructure, and we would argue that if you're using it in production or even in your know, test environments, then you should probably view it the same way. It's, it really is important, and if something goes wrong, like people can do horrible things like impersonating your services and your clients, and nobody wants that. Uh, towards that end, we're actually pretty early adopters of Project SIGSTOR, which 
we believe has had a V1 release this week, so yay to them. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> so we use Cosign from Sigstore to sign all of our container images, so you can validate those when you download them. Um, all the details for that are on our website, and we would encourage more people to do that because it's just an extra sort of reassurance that you're actually getting your containers from us and not someone random. We have seen like third-party mirrors of our container images on the web, and you've got no way of knowing if they've been tampered with, and obviously you don't want your certificates to be tampered with. So we would encourage more use of that. There's a, there's a certified US government container which we have no idea where it came from. It's not signed by us though, so uh, whether you trust that's up to you. Yeah, we hope, we hope you trust us. Um, we also are self-certified, we're saying, as Salsa 2, and Salsa is the best named project ever, I think. Um, it's just kind of a way of specifying like, how much time and thought we've put into our supply chain security, right? How, how can you verify that the things you get are actually from us? So we think we're at level two, where I think we're nearly at level three. Uh, the differences between that don't really matter for this talk. We're not talking about Salsa here, but like, generally it's a pretty good indicator of us taking the time to look into this. And I would recommend if you're interested in that or you've not heard of Salsa to check out salsa.dev uh, for more information on that. Of course, an another aspect of security is uh, actually, if asserting things like policy about the certificates that you're issuing, which leads nicely <laughs> into. Yeah, so obviously we've got a lot of production users, and I'm just going to briefly say that Cert Manager is not just the Cert Manager kind of certificate renewal operator, it's an entire project. And within anything that inter interacts with TLS workflows in the cloud native space can live under the Cert Manager GitHub org. Um, so one of the things that we've put there is um, policy engine. So in Cert Manager, if you just deploy it, it will approve anything in your cluster, which is probably not what you want, because if you happen to have a cluster issuer that could sign your like, production web services, um, anyone could just make a certificate in their namespace, reference it, and then Cert Manager would just sign it, and someone's now taken your secure infrastructure and ruined it by getting a valid certificate. So yeah, we have a policy engine, which you can, it's, it's fairly simple. It matches on uh, DNS names or common names. Um, so is this, is this person allowed to issue this certificate? And the requester information is embedded into the certificate request. So you say this, only this service account in this namespace is allowed to sign our production certs. Um, uh, if you're using Cert Manager for uh, like your credentials, you probably want them short-lived, like MTLS credentials. So right now, we support certificates down to one hour in duration and have them automatically renewed every like 20 minutes or so. It's, uh, one hour is not quite short enough, but that was the one mistake we made in our V1 API, so we're not sure whether we should change it or not. We're trying to get it lower. <laughs> and of course, private key rotation policy. So if if you can, you should always rotate your private key when you uh, issue your certificate. If, if you remember Heartbleed, when a bunch of private keys got leaked and everyone had to reissue their certificates, and there was some very large percentage of certificates that just got reissued with the same private key, can, like, completely invalidating the point of reissuing them. So yeah, make sure you always do that. But it turns out that some legacy apps will re rely on the private key being the same. So we allow you to turn it off, and we're sad about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we already talked about integrations, but every part of Cert Manager is kind of modular, and it can be disabled, and you can drop in your own component. So our, our approval policy, we, it's, it's pretty good if it, do, if it does what you want, but if you have a really complicated like, internal security posture, you might want to like, put your own approver in, and we had an example with OPA. I think, it's, I think at some point we still yeah. have it. I, as, a, as a cryptography person, I'm super interested in things like policy which can say, hey, you must have a private key for your certificate which is of an acceptable security level. Like you don't, you don't want people issuing uh, keys that are gonna be broken in like a week on a Raspberry Pi, right? Like this stuff is important. Yeah, and we've got lots of integrations with other cloud native projects. So we can like replace Citadel in Istio. So Cert Manager can be your RA as well. And we've got really good uh, integration with Linkerd, and I think you gave a workshop on it. Yep, if you, anyone wants a link to the workshop, I can provide you that after the talk. Um, 
And while we started with Ingress, we have support for SIG Network Gateway API. And there was a really good talk yesterday on the Gateway API. I don't know if people went to that. Shout out to Jake for adding all that support because <laughs> it, it seemed like a really hard piece of work and he nailed it. And yeah, so thanks, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, we have rich Prometheus metrics, which is really important for observability. Like, if you have hundreds of thousands of certificates in your cluster, like you're not going to be manually checking them. Right? Set manager will tell you when it's when a certificate's due for renewal, and you could maybe alert on the certificate going past that without being renewed, because then something's gone wrong. That's kind of the asterisk earlier when we said we kind of promise that your certs will get renewed and you won't go down because of it. Like, you have to check the logs for it as well. <laughs> well, it could be someone else's fault. Like, the issuer could, like, if it was a paid for issuer, you could have run out of money. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, yeah, we also have two CSI drivers. So, kind of a sticky point sometimes with uh, enterprises is they don't want uh, secrets stored in the Kubernetes API. So, a normal, a, a TLS key pair has a private key in. So we have a regular CSI driver, which will expose the certificate to your uh, pod, but the private key will only ever be in memory. But we also have a CSI driver that implements the Spiffy X509 standard. Uh, I think there was a talk on that yesterday as well. <laughs> this is the thing about coming last. You can reference all of the previous events. And maybe at the next KubeCon, we'll be able to talk about more of these things. Like we have a lot of integrations, as we just said, and we really, really want to keep on doing this because it's such a, a great way of showcasing what we can do and what other projects can do. I, I don't think it's crazy to say that a lot of projects have a need for some sort of certificate management, right? Like, it comes into a lot of things just because TLS comes into a lot of things. It's, it's ideally, it's used everywhere nowadays. Um, so if you have an idea, if your project maybe could integrate with Cert Manager, we could have a blog post or a workshop or the, a talk in Amsterdam, maybe, about it. We'd love to talk to you about it and maybe work together. Who knows? So, yeah, please do drop by and chat to us, especially at our booth, which we'll talk about a bit later, uh, if, if you've got any ideas on that, because we'd love to talk to you. Cool. So that was the, uh, the present. And now we can move on to the future. So we keep talking about our integrations, but there's, the CNCF landscape is growing every year. There's me lots of meme templates about it. So we, we, yeah, we want to integrate with any CNCF project that talks about TLS certificate management, especially like other service meshes. Like there's a couple of posts about Cilium which we're excited about. Mm. Uh, I'm also personally very interested in Spiffy Inspire. And so while we support a very small part of the Spiffy spec in our CSI driver, it would be nice to like, at least implement the Federation API so we could actually join Cert Manager and Spire trust domains. Uh, a lot of work recently has been going on the developer experience. Like, there are, there's a small number of core contributors, but we all have other jobs. So we need to make it as easy as possible for the community to get involved in the project. Uh, recently, there was a lot of work on fixing our kind of flaky CI. So now, if you make a PR and the tests fail, it's because you didn't test it, not because our test infrastructure is terrible. At least in theory. <laughs> um, we also, yeah, we participate in Google's Summer of Code every year and recently Google Season of Docs. So we're really trying to bring new contributors up and get them up to speed with Cloud Native. And yeah, there's like lots of things in our roadmap. Here's just through some examples in the slides. If, you, if any of them jump out to you, like, please reach out on Slack or anywhere. Further on to that, we are pretty convinced that roadmaps are like crucially important for an open source project because for people to rely on that project, they need to know what's coming in the future. The way we're achieving that is to have a roadmap available in the main cert manager repo. That's cert manager slash cert manager. Um, we can't promise any timelines or anything because as Jake said, we have other jobs and, and you know there's only so much time in the world for... for um, adding all these features, but we do have a sort of aspirational list of the kinds of things we'd like to work on. Uh, if, if there's something there that would be really useful for you, uh, plus one sort of would be appreciated, like talk to us about it. If you think there's something missing on that roadmap that we should add, like we're happy to chat. I'm saying that a lot, but we are, we are really genuinely happy to chat. Um, another thing in the future, this is, this is kind of becoming my baby and I'm sort of super enthusiastic about it and, and um, 
this top line, I've said it so many times already at this conference, but like getting a certificate is only half the problem. I think I'm going to get that tattooed across my chest. <laughs> so what, what I mean by that is, is it's all well and good if you've got the certificate that identifies your website, right? That's, that's great. Like if you use Acme, clients will trust it automatically because it's a publicly trusted cert. They probably already have a bundle of certificates on their machine, which will allow them to validate that cert. That's great. But the other half of the problem is, is generally how do clients know how to trust certificates? And I think it's an area that, as an industry, we're not looking at enough. Um, as I say that, there is upstream work on this kind of stuff. So like, clearly, people are looking at it. But I think we really should be looking at it more. Uh, without trust, like, none of TLS works. And like, getting the certificate doesn't really like, do much good if you don't know how to trust it. Yeah, and by default, in WebPK, you trust pretty much every CA in the world, which you don't, you don't know if any of them have been compromised, or maybe you don't actually trust, say, a certificate from a country you're at war with. Yeah, there's all kinds of, of spooky things going on here. This isn't a Halloween-themed talk, but like, there, is some, there is some scary stuff going on. Uh, and we'd like to help solve the problem if we can, right? Um, I mentioned the upstream work, but like we have, uh, as, as a non-core uh, project, we can kind of move fast and like discover things, learn things, uh, hopefully work with people on this. If you are interested in a bit of a Halloween scare, I did a talk a few weeks ago uh, where I sort of go into Trust Manager, which is what we hope will be our solution to this problem, uh, and sort of the, the kind of things that we think about and, and how you might want to consider what could go wrong in your cluster. Uh, so yeah, please feel free to scan that QR code. The slides will be available. They've been uploaded. Thank you, Jake, for remembering that, because I would have forgotten. Uh, so yeah, you can get that there as well. But uh, if you fancy a fright, there you go. Uh, another thing uh, that we'd really like to highlight is that we do get a lot of community engagement on this project. We mentioned the 9,500 GitHub stars. We get a lot of issues and pull requests and messages on Slack and emails. That's great. We're not saying we don't want that, right? The community engagement is fantastic. But there's a lot of work to do. And as we said, we have jobs, right? We'd love to get more maintainers. I'm sure this is standard for a lot of projects. But we, we, if you think, hey, certificates are interesting, maybe I'd, be, uh, I'd like to get involved in some way. Like, that doesn't have to be code. It could be docs. It could be sort of community stewardship. That's a tricky thing to say on a Friday. Um, then, yeah, please do get in touch. Uh, again, like, you don't need to have any experience in doing this already. Um, there's, there's no gateway to entry that you need to hurt, like, clear here. Like, where we can help you out, and we want to talk to you about it. So please do reach out. I've said that so many times. <laughs> One great way of reaching out is to visit our booth. Obviously, it's Friday morning, so people might be going home. Uh, but we're going to be there all day today. I'll be there all afternoon, or most of the afternoon. I'll try and find some time to eat something. Um, but yeah, please do drop by the booth. Like, we'd love to talk about anything. Like, some people just come by and say that they like Cert Manager, and that does wonders for my ego, so please do that as well. Um, <laughs> Maybe more of a draw than inflating my ego further is to get your own souvenir certificate. This is a super cool thing. It's so exciting. We print out an actual X509 certificate on a little piece of card. We do a little wax stamp with the Cert Manager logo. It's so much fun. Like, we've done tons of them. Please come and get your own. Like, it's, it's so much fun. And you can use it to cryptographically verify that you are actually here at KubeCon. Yeah. No one will trust you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is so much fun. And I, also so much fun is this line, which I'm so pleased with myself for. We'd love to have a TLS handshake with you in person, <laughs> or an elbow bump if you'd prefer. Uh, so yeah, please do come along. We'll still be there until the end of today. Uh, we threw loads of links on this slide. Obviously, you can't click them in person, but the slides will be available. And uh, we encourage you to check out all of this. I'd highlight as well the, the meetings and the Slack, uh, Slack channel. Uh, we have tons of ways that you can reach out to us, and our meetings are public. Um, if you're US-based, our uh, I was going to say fortnightly meeting, but that's not a thing that people say here. The meeting that we hold every two weeks is available uh, and, and will work for a US time zone. The, the stand-ups are sort of early morning EU time zones, so whatever works best for you. But please feel free to join. 
Um, there's also an email address if you want to go a bit more old school than Slack. Like that's totally cool too. We do check those. Um, so yeah, we we'd like to thank you all for turning out today. Like we recognise as we started, uh, as we said at the beginning, there was obviously the parties last night. Uh, I had a very intense game of big chess with someone in in the tent outside. Uh, Spookinetti's happened. Thank you for turning out. Um, it's been great to have you all here. There's a feedback link here in this QR code. Uh, we'd love to take any questions that people might have. Uh, we, and, and if you don't get time for a question or you'd rather ask in person, again, I'd, I'd direct you to the booth or Slack or any of the methods I've just talked about for like five minutes. So yeah. thank you all so much. Thanks so much. <laughs>